Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Silver Bulletin presented by Lantern TV. I'm Khalid Hashi. And I'm Brian Nelson. And now let's take a look at some of today's plays from the Big Ten Championship against Wisconsin. And we are back. Ohio State just defeated Wisconsin 34 to 21. And we have our sports editors, Andy Anders and Griffin Strom here. Now, Griffin, I'll go to you for this first question. Uh, early on, Wisconsin had found a lot of success on the offense, which is a complete contrast to their earlier meeting against Ohio State back in October. What was it about this Wisconsin offense that allowed them to be success successful early on? Yeah, Brian, Jonathan Taylor was able to get free in this game. He was not able to do that in his two last games against Ohio State. He was held to like 42 and 53 yards or something like that, um, which is very atypical of Jonathan Taylor's um, performances. I mean, since he played Ohio State, he had 200 yards in three of the, the next four games. And today you kind of saw typical Jonathan Taylor early. He had a 44-yard touchdown run on the, just the fifth snap of the game to put um, the Badgers ahead. Then with 40 seconds to go in the half, Ohio State looked to, to have gained some momentum there with his getting on the board with the score. But then you saw Jonathan Taylor take one 45 yards to get um, the Badgers back into the red zone and they scored again um, and Jack Cohn was playing good as well he was able to scramble a bunch he had a 14 yard uh, touchdown run himself uh, punched two um, in on the ground himself then he found Quintez Cephas a lot had some su success in the uh, air attack as well um, but obviously in the second half it did not quite uh, go quite as smooth for the Badgers mm -hmm. and Andy um, not the first half we're used to seeing from Justin Fields um, so he did have that missed long pass to Chris Olave in the first half and also that fumble in the red zone. What do you think were causing some of the struggles in the first half and how did he recover in the second half? Frankly, from the box, and I mean, obviously, I don't get to talk to Fields on the sideline, but it looked like he almost had the yips in this game, came out kind of shaky, a couple throws where he didn't quite get his feet set, threw the ball a little too high or too wide, waited a little too long right. in the pocket, didn't look as decisive as we're used to. And then finally in the second half, I don't know what it was, what clicked mentally for him, but a switch just flipped, kind of got the offense going. He hit some big throws later in the yeah, game. Definitely. And then also the offensive line, they picked it up huge in the second half. They had a lot of struggles in the first half. Justin Fields was getting pressured a lot. How do you think they performed from the first half to the second half as well? Well, yeah, I, it's odd to see how they settled into this game. I think, uh, you know, they've seen this Wisconsin front before, the kind of pressures they bring. Mm -hmm. um, 
And again, like I said, Fields waited too long on a few of those throws, but it's also like a few miscommunications. There was a twist stunt where a defensive tackle came freeing, got a big sack on Fields. Um, it's just the entire Ohio State team, really. It's a tale of two halves, right? They yeah. uh, performed well beneath their standard in the first half, mm -hmm. got relocked in, made some adjustments, came back out, performed the second half, and the line was another example of that. Um, really just paved the way for Dobbins in the second half and got some better protection for Fields to allow him to get back in the flow of things. Yeah, yeah. really, so the whole team's performance. Mm -hmm. And one offensive player in particular who had a really sh stellar night was K.J. Hill. What was your take on just, like, the impact he had on Ohio State's offense? Yeah, Brian, Ohio State scored 27 unanswered in the second half, and they shut out Wisconsin in the second half as well. A big catalyst for that on offense was K.J. Hill. He came in needing four catches to break David Boston's all-time receptions record for Ohio State. He got that. He had that record tonight and an, an extra one as well. Um, two of those were touchdowns, and that was part of that 27 to nothing run um, that, got, that got Ohio State back in the game and had allowed them to take the lead. Um, a super impressive night from K.J. Hill, you know, in one of his last games here at Ohio State. Um, this is kind of one of the reasons he wanted to come back, you know what I mean, to be to make these huge plays uh, with this stage, you know, to stay undefeated tonight and to set that record for us. It's funny you say that now because in the post-game press conference, um, I asked K.J. Hill about his record-breaking catch, and he said, you guys remind me about it every single week, so it's hard to forget. And then also when he caught that touchdown pass that broke it, he flexed to the camera and said, yeah, I broke it now. What's up? <laughs> All right, well said. And I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching another episode of the Silver Bulletin presented by Lantern TV. Stay tuned in a few weeks for our coverage of the college football playoff. Thanks for watching.